One year ago, the worst case scenario happened when nearly everything we had built and we're working on burned down an unexpected disaster. Since then, it's been an uphill struggle to get back, restore what was lost, and headed on to bigger and greater things. But first, I wanted to update everyone on where we stand as we come up on the one year anniversary of this tragic fire, as all of you have played a very integral part in this journey. And I wanted to give one last opportunity for you to leave your mark. It has been a long and slow process to recover. And honestly, a year ago, I had basically decided I was just gonna quit because the thought of rebuilding after all of this was just seemed insurmountable. I owed it to at least let people know what had happened. And uh, maybe I could at least get enough money to rebuild what was lost. So at least wouldn't lose my own property value. But when insurance failed me, you guys came through and you saved everything. Um, the outpouring of support was unimaginable. I think as a creator on YouTube, it's very easy to get uh, very focused on the negativity and what you're doing wrong and looking at just numbers of what, what you're falling short on, numbers that are going down. You lose sight of the people who, who do care and they do appreciate what you do. I'd say it's kind of revitalized my interest in continuing, but rebuilding has been a very slow and expensive process. Getting the proper permits, delayed getting started before winter. So mostly had to just sit and wait until summer came. So in the meantime, I focused on recovering whatever I could, including rebuilding my car that was damaged in the fire, which turned out to be surprisingly straightforward despite being fully totaled out. I also recovered a collection of the tools that I was able to dig out of the workshop with insurance refusing coverage and a limited fund to build from. On top of that, skyrocketing building costs. We had to be really strategic in what we rebuilt and how we could do it. We're trying to make at least some improvements, but not going over our very limited budget. But first we had to take down what was already there and get out of the way to make room for something new, which sadly included a lot of projects. I had spent a lot of man hours and labor to construct. As of last year, I spent quite a bit of labor building this kiln here. I was hoping to meet a lot of our needs for making glass and ceramics and be able to reach some really high temperatures. Ironically, shortly after finishing it, we had a fire that was completely unrelated to this giant hot thing that's right next to it, which is uh, frustrating. So you expect the hot thing to start the fire, not some cool thing that was just a little too hot. So with the fire, there's an opportunity to expand the shop and the easiest way to do it with the existing footprints, not having to rebuild everything, is to extend it back to this area. So where we are right now, those formerly outside, is going to become basically the new shop. That does mean that everything here needs to be cleared out. So we're gonna pour new cement on top of this and this, uh, this guy needs to go. And originally hoping we could find some way to just pick up the whole thing and move it and salvage all of the ton of, of work. But unfortunately the logistics of that are not looking too feasible. It's just a lot of weight and not a good way to get underneath it. Looks like we're gonna have to dismantle it and rebuild it. However, that does give an opportunity to kind of redesign it. In retrospect, it was a little too big. And it took a lot of wood to like really get up to decent temperature. So I think if we can compact it a little bit, be a lot more efficient and still reach hopefully a high enough temperature to do some glass blowing. Just because, you know, don't want to have a second fire. Can move this away from any structures. It was pretty adequately insulated from the actual garage, so it didn't seem to like pose any risk there. But at this point, I'm not really looking to take many chances. So we're gonna move this oh, kind of in the middle of the yard. Yeah. So now, now I need to destroy this thing I made. Not looking forward to that, but has to be done. Okay. To minimize cost, the goal was to preserve whatever we could, primarily the existing walls, which are largely untouched by the fire. But the roof would need to go entirely.
then out back we extended the workshop as much as we could and poured a new foundation for that. To keep the price as minimal as possible, I did as much of the work myself with my very generous dad and slowly everything started to come together. Another improvement we were able to make was an attic storage up above for extra storage space. One nice feature we'll be able to add to the workshop as we wrap things up is an air filter, thanks to today's sponsor, Lavoit. Lavoit is the number one air filter brand in the United States and on Amazon. We're gonna have a few different ways to manage and collect dust and provide ventilation in the shop, but getting those remaining fine particles out of the air will still be a challenge. Thankfully, they sent me the Lavoit 600S, which is perfect for large spaces and work areas like the new workshop. This machine provides adequate coverage for even the new enlarged workshop, refreshing the air in a 1500 square foot area twice an hour. It's a heavy duty filter that will let us use it in the garage to help with any sawdust or smoke. It's ideal for your own indoors workshop. It will even connect with the VSync app, which lets you monitor air quality, set timers, manage rooms, and more. It's also available in a smaller version for your individual rooms. Just check it out for yourself. Check out their sales in the links below. So it's been a little bit over a year now since the actual fire and things are progressing pretty good. Kind of in the home stretch to finally having it wrapped up. Um, so let's go take a look and see where things are at. Pet the Dobby. This is what used to be the workshop we had before. All the same walls, we were able to salvage them. I had to put a whole new roof and then pour a new foundation because the other one is a little bit beat up to kind of prevent any fire issues in the future. We have the extra thick fire rated drywall. The existing drywall that was already here is what preserved the walls and was why we were able to keep them. But the ceiling was just plywood and that, that just went up. And that's basically why the structure was a loss was because uh, there wasn't drywall on the ceiling. So we're gonna make sure we put drywall on the ceiling and uh, give us a, a pretty decent uh, protection from any future fire risk. Add-on room is going to be uh, kind of for our primitive building. So this whole room is brand new, what we built on. There used to be the, the little metal lean-to and the pottery kiln we built before. Had to tear all that out. We'll probably, probably rebuild that somewhere else, uh, a little bit further away from the structure, just so I can sleep well at night. But this is probably gonna be our main work area. So it'll be kind of our main workbench. We'll do our woodworking and stuff over here. And then on this side will be the kind of the hot room. And we'll have the forge and we'll get to do the blacksmithing in this area. And uh, so on top of extra thick drywall that's fire rated, going to add a layer of either brick or stone on here 
that uh, will offer even more protection. But it gives an opportunity that uh, you can purchase a part of the workshop and help with its reconstruction. And you can buy rights to a brick, put your name on it, and it'll be permanently there in the structure. Don't want to shaft everybody who donated earlier. So if you've already donated the same amount to our GoFundMe or more, you're automatically going to get a brick. If you already donated something close and you just want to donate a little bit extra to get a brick, just reach out to me. So we're pretty close to the home stretch. Money has run a little tight, unfortunately. We were able to, to do things pretty efficiently cost-wise, but the uh, the added uh, just what building expenses have gone up has made it uh, a bit tight. So hopefully we can get a little bit extra help from all of you to get us to the finish line and get things up and running. And hopefully in a couple weeks, be kind of back to normal. Past year has given a very good opportunity to kind of rethink how things have been done and kind of get out of the grind of just trying to survive in the YouTube platform and trying to constantly grow and build a bigger team. And um, I don't know, I've kind of come to the realization that I want to minimize things and just keep it simple and keep it most importantly enjoyable. Um, before it was just a grind of feeling like I had to crank out the next video or otherwise I wouldn't be bringing enough money to make payroll. But it really created an unhealthy environment. Making videos just for the sake of making videos to pay the bills and uh, just not, not enjoying it as much as I should have. Um, and it's been a real grind. I think with taking some time this year, I can feel that um, I do want to keep doing this, but I want to do it differently. So I'm hoping kind of a, f a hard reset, not the ideal kind of reset I would have hoped for, but I think it gives a good opportunity to fix a lot of issues and uh, kind of re reaffirm my focus and desires. So I'm hoping things are gonna get a lot better from here. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.